How a plate of steaming beetroot has become a stumbling block in diplomatic relations between Russia and Ukraine, a field of territorial, political, cultural struggle to define culinary boundaries. On the geopolitics of Borscht, we are going to find out next. So do not forget to subscribe this channel and comment to this special one. We are starting right now. The borscht did not accidentally spill over into Russian cuisine, but was a part of a move in which Stalin began in order to create a common consciousness for many Arab ethnic and national groups held by force under the political framework of the Soviet Union. Stalin enlisted his food minister, Anastas Mikoyan, to create a Soviet national cuisine. Borscht became one of the flagship dishes, and with its penetration into Soviet cafeterias, many Russians became a keystone to eating it on an almost daily basis. The events of 2014 also resonate with the infamous Soviet rapacity and Ukraine's transformation into the food barn of the Moscow elite in the 1930s, while many Ukrainians starved to death. Нельзя было делиться борщом. Ну нельзя. Он должен был принадлежать только кому-то одному. Вот только кому-то одному, какому-то какому-то одному народу, одной национальности. А так чтобы он был This cultural culinary war has recently intensified and has already earned the nickname Borscht War, thanks to a Ukrainian chef named Evgen Kolopotenko. It seems that this Ukrainian megastar has loaded on his shoulder all this border work and restoring Russian forces in the territories of Ukraine through a plate of borscht. As a part of his mobilization for this struggle, he established the Ukrainian Institute of Culture about a year ago. In a post he published in 2020, he shared with the readers the course he is doing in turning the Bosch into a Ukrainian national asset and gaining recognition for it at the UN as well. It was necessary to protect the Bosch because it is not just a struggle for food, but a struggle for the cultural identity of the nation. Research discovered that 1500 years ago, borscht was eaten in Kiev area, but has not yet been mentioned as Ukrainian. The first mention of borscht is indeed from Ukraine and is also cooked and eaten by all Ukrainians. But legally, borscht is not recognized as Ukrainian, perhaps because nobody thought it should be documented. conclusion that all Ukrainians are different, but one thing they have in common, the love of borscht. Klopotenko concludes the post with words glory to Ukraine. The way he seeks to do this culinary frontier work cannot be seen as detached from the Russian claim to borscht, which is a part of a more significant and far-reaching move in Russian history and Ukrainian language oppression, local politics and above of all the Ukrainian independence. And it is possible that Kolopotenko's move is beginning to bear fruit in the form of a softened tweet issued by the Russian embassy in Washington recently, in which it refers to borscht as a dish that characterizes the entire region while diming its Russian national pedigree. 
Does the struggle for Borscht and this spartial Russian withdrawal from the claim to its ownership possibly reflect signs of the Russian beer weakness in light of rumors of Putin's illness? It may be so, and days will tell. But what is absolutely clear is the role of food in the national age, in the incessant creative of culinary and culturally processes and indeed even political boundaries. And that is the reason I remind you again to subscribe for the eyes and get the best food history videos to your main screen. Thanks for watching. See you on the next.